every bit of gear that you see here, I have 92.9 kilograms of gold mining gear or about 205 pounds. So that's kind of what's going to come with me on every single trip. The food that would go in the cooler would change based on what I'm doing as would how much spare gas I bring for the engine, all that kind of stuff. Somehow, this is the interesting thing. Last year during the summer, I did not have the big winter bag or this camping chair, but my sleeping bag, sleeping pad and tent would fit in the sea -Doo. Instead of a cooler, I used that front compartment with some water bottles that were frozen, which I would then drink later to store all of my food. All of this gear right here, plus about a third of what's in this camping box would go into a backpack. So all of my clothing and like the basics, toiletries, uh, water filter. This would all fit on a 1997 three seater Sea-Doo GTX. I'm surprised the thing even floated. So <laughs> this year, all I've really added is a little bit more stuff to my camping box and I'm using a cooler as my seat so that for some longer trips, I'll have a little bit more quality food to eat. It can fit on a Sea-Doo, but you don't need a big 16 foot John boat for this. If, if you're looking to start out, go mining. If you're conscious about where you, where you put your weight and what you're bringing with you, I would even suggest maybe a slightly smaller cooler for most three day trips. But a 12 foot John boat, just to get you started, it's all you'd really need to carry all of this gear. Another little side note, Right here, this is my old sluice box. So this is the 24 inch wide, five foot long beach box that based on the exact same calculations I used for this, um, where I was saying I was catching about 80% of the gold, this was catching a legit 99 plus percent of the gold. It did phenomenally well. And it, it would come with, uh, you, you plug wheels into the bottom so you could kind of cart the whole thing around. This box, surprisingly, with with the carpet in it is 18 kilograms so just this box by itself 13 and a half kilograms it is surprisingly light it's not like working with wood limits you as a gold miner if if you know some basic woodworking you can build a box like this put some wood protector on it this thing's got to be at least eight years old it's been stored outside almost its entire life and it's still holding together. It's still totally flat. If I threw a mat in there and built a new hopper for it, I could mine with that today. So don't be discouraged by, I don't have a nice aluminum high banker. You can build something out of wood. You can buy a box almost identical to this. People, people sell what you need to get into this and it's, it's not too difficult to get started in gold mining. So I'm gonna load all this into the boat and let's go camping. Sun's out, let's hit the road. It is snowing. It is actually snowing, all because I decided to go camping. Nothing fell out of the boat while I was driving, which is always nice. I put in at the launch here and immediately water just started pouring into my boat. But because I have pulled out the back floor, I was able to see that all of the water was coming from that hole, meaning that it was under that seat. So I have traced the problem, there's a patch right here and you can see this little patch here has just a hole right there, probably where a rivet's missing. There's another hole here with what looks like a rock's jammed in it. So the theory is, it comes rolled up in this little tube. This is actually got to be two years old. It's still soft, which is a good sign. I'm just going to take, that would be, let's take a quarter of it for now. Last time I crashed my boat, I had a big hole in the bottom, my different boat, but I had some friends bring me some of this. It goes on right underwater in the wet and everything. Caution, irritant, read directions, eh. <laughs> Whoops. I'm gonna go down there and uh, see if I can patch the holes. It's one of those sink or swim moments where we will literally sink or swim based on how long that boxy holds up. So there you go. Um, it is a shallow, shallow river. 
this time of year. I've managed to keep from smashing anything so far. Um, I'm gonna have a quick peek at this gravel bar and see what that looks like. Might be a nice place to camp if I don't head too far up river. Jeremy's sweet jet boat compared to uh, my little still, still, <laughs> jet boat. still a jet boat, right? Yeah. You mind being yeah. on camera at all, or? Like, <laughs> this is uh, this is Jeremy. I'm hey out guys. here looking for gold, and he comes ripping by in this jet boat. Apparently, last year he just got his neck brace off. He broke his neck driving the thing. So <laughs> yeah, it's lucky. By the sounds of it, I saw the picture, it's gruesome. Uh, lucky to be alive for sure. And it kind of makes you wonder, like, maybe I should have a helmet on. No, um, <laughs> it's safe. You, know, it's safe. you know what the other thing is, though, if you go in the water, you drown. That's, with a helmet, if you can't get it off. That's. But at least you're conscious. I know, maybe. I, I know. know. That's, that's one of the things. <laughs> but, dude, yeah. but no, it's, it's always cool to meet somebody out in the river and the story's like... Yeah. That thing is so cool. Four flakes. Most interesting thing is there's a lot of poop on this island. Must be a popular spot for the birds. It's a little half shovel. I've never actually had luck on these islands in the middle of the river. One color. Still got a few more pans to explore at this location. And then I might try one more bend just down river from here and uh, it'll just about be time to set up for bed. That, that sun's about to set here, oh, probably about another hour and I might as well take advantage of the light to get set up for sleeping. How time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> the sun is almost set and Got the boat parked for the night. I found a spot where it was a little bit shallow and pulled it up like this. So if it does keep sort of filling with water, it won't completely sink on me, which would be nice. The anchor buried in nicely over there. It's a real calm section. Definitely saw a beaver smack his tail over there. But I would say it is time to set up for some dinner. Well. No gold yet. But the weather has held out pretty nicely, which is always good. All of these little compact camping chairs there. Oh yeah. Now this little guy is like 25 or 30 bucks. And I actually had a guy renting a basement and his uh, little electric plug-in hot plate broke, so we gave him this guy. He used it for about six months, said it was great. Runs on butane, press in the fuel. Does she light? There we go. Usually lights in the first go. Turn that down a little bit. cooking on cast iron today because why not huh. got some water out of my uh, cooler ice cubes today we're doing some pierogies which will be just fantastic with some sour cream 
and oh, I love cooking with actual butter, but this sort of fits the bill for fitting into my cooler. I didn't have a stick defrosted. Let's get that nice and nice and buttery. We're out camping. We've earned it. Hmm. <laughs> I actually can't believe that's not butter. Of course, I guess step one is set up camp and step two is crack a cold one if you're camping with Steve. But I haven't really set up camp yet. I'm kind of just making some food. So this is step 1.5. Say Strongbow apple cider. Mmm, it's nice. Now, let's get some pierogies on here. Heats up quick, I mean, for cast iron pan. This thing puts out a lot of heat. Brought some extras in case I have a long day tomorrow. I actually brought some uh, some sourdough mix for tomorrow morning, as well as some maple syrup. Oh yeah, we'll let those cook. Just gonna uh, point the camera at the sunset clouds there because they are looking pretty nice. Not sure if I can zoom in and still get any detail out of it, but absolutely gorgeous. Too bad, not too bad. How they doing? Oh yeah, give them some more time yet. You know, there's no mosquitoes. It's it's chilly, but I'm dressed for it. These are insulated pants. I've got a couple hoodies on and a long john. Uh, whatever base layer on to keep me warm and I'm comfortable. I'm super, super comfortable. Fires are one of those things where there's a bit of an art to starting a fire. If you want there to be, or you pour gasoline or camp fuel on it, diesel, kerosene, whatever you fancy, makes it a little safer than straight gas. But if you are you're gonna be building a fire out of sticks what works really well for me is you do kind of a log cabin, but fill in all of the insides of the log cabin. So rather than just doing like an outside, you actually build up the inside, sort of like a floor in one direction and then a floor in the other direction. And that means that right where you hold your source of ignition, it's actually going to light up. Now, if you use some paper, I've got a, an A and W paper bag I could crumple up under this and light. That would work. But as far as what you use to light the fire, I've never been a fan of those little sparking sticks or any of the fancy stuff like that. This is a Bic lighter. You can get these in a miniature size if you're a real backpacker, like ultra minimalist. They last forever. You can throw them in the water, get them wet, take them out as long as they dry off. They almost always light. You can just pack two of them, one in a little Ziploc bag, and these will start your fire for you. There we go. Took a while, but that's why a Bic has a lot of fuel. Get a little heat into me. Then I have to decide whether I'm gonna set up a tent or based on the sky right now, not a single cloud. I uh, 
I might just sleep right under the stars. I'll show you my setup when I do, but I've got an old tent fly. It's just like a really lightweight tarp. And I'll lay that down and then I'll sleep on half of it so that I hold it down with my weight in case the wind picks up. And if for some reason in the middle of the night there's a snow squall, I basically just grab it, throw it on top of my sleeping bag, kind of like a bivy sack, and it'll keep me dry. At least for a one night thing. Because you always hope you could just sleep under the stars, but in nature, more often than not, you'll get woken up with a little drizzle. And it sucks to be two in the morning and have to actually like seek shelter when you can just toss a little tarp over your head. Real nice. I think this might be the simplest camping setup ever. I'm gonna take this old tent fly and just spread her out. That's kind of just a big square tarp. I feel like I'm gonna put my head that way, feet towards the water where all the river monsters are gonna come from. So these things super, super light and they blow up really thick and comfy so you can sleep right on all these rocks. You can just blow it up if you feel like it, but it comes with this little inflation bag. And it basically, it's got a little seal you put on down here that kind of seals itself on and then you basically just fill up the bag, kind of close the top and scrunch it down. And it's, it's probably about six of these. Open her up, cinch her down. Now the advantage of doing this instead of blowing, obviously it's easier on the lungs, but the humidity in your breath inside of these, because they don't have foam as insulation, it's just air in there, that uh, condensation can kind of crystallize and lower their R value slightly. So it's recommended you do this, especially when it's quite cold out like tonight. And I'm just gonna set it on this tarp off to one side like that. Get that laid out. Kick the shoes off, hop into the sleeping bag, and lie right under nature. And if for some reason it starts raining on me in the middle of the night, I've got all this spare tarp over to my left and I can just pull that on top of myself like a little baby sack it just sort of loosely fits over the sleeping bag here and I can sleep peacefully as if it was a tent. Uh, you may have guessed the only real disadvantage of this setup is it has no bug screen. So if you had a proper bivy sack, um, you know, keep, keep all the bugs out. But this time of year, no bugs. It's gonna be a perfect way to spend the night. Having a fire out here, it's more than just heat. There's comfort because there are cougars out here, uh, obviously bears, coyotes. Um, in the sand behind the camera, you can see some interesting footprints, just can't really tell what they are, but it's like, you know what? I'm not the only person who hangs out on this gravel bar, so. <laughs> it is nice when you're chilling before bed to have a good fire going. And I always like to sleep next to my bear spray. There's a beaver hitting his tail in the water. I don't know if you can hear this. You can hear the beaver gnawing on some wood. Love those little guys, but man, do they scare me when they slap their tails on the water. It's so quiet out here, and then boom! I'm sure I'll hear a tree fall over pretty quick. And I come back to the safety and comfort of my little fire.
I can hear coyotes in the distance. There is absolutely zero moon. It is pitch black. And it's a little bit chilly. I have a tarp on the ground with my sleeping pad on it. And I've got a spare sleeping bag on top, kind of like a blanket. So I should be warm for the night. And I get to sleep under the stars. I'm just enjoying life inside my sleeping bag for now. Still a little bit icy. Good morning. And it is a good morning. Last night, I believe there was some talk about how fire can be an art form. Well, it's really cold right now. And gasoline makes nice art. Get your lighter. Straight pump gas. Now there's a bit of a trick to this. You don't want to use too much or it will literally explode. And I got just a little bit on my lighting stick. Gas goes a safe distance. This is my lighting stick with gas just on the end. Boom. Art has many forms. It definitely got down to minus 10 last night. Hopefully my cooler kept my food nice and cold for me. Um, <laughs> in this case, thawed. And uh, I'm just gonna show you a quick picture of what's inside my boat. If I title this video uh, something like camping in a sinking boat or sinking boat winter camping or something like that, I'm not lying. Check this out. Coolers floating in there. Bilge is right underwater. This is actually why I tried to park in a shallow spot like that. Because the boat is just sitting right on the ground. It just sank down. So the water on the outside of the boat is exactly the same height as the water on the inside of the boat. <laughs> Life is just so good right now. <laughs> I've got some water thawing out by the fire and uh, <laughs> still a little bit of frost in the sleeping bag but the sun is just beating down heat now. It's just burning everything away really nicely. So I'm awake, I'm warm, I'm comfortable. I actually had a really good sleep and I am very excited because right here is some maple syrup. What goes better with maple syrup than sourdough pancakes? Since I'm far too cool to bring a plate, I, uh, I'm just gonna do one pancake at a time and once this is ready to flip, I'm gonna flip it, shut off the stove, and pour the maple syrup, just eat it straight out of the pan and fire it back up for the next one. Boat's nice and sunk. I'm not worried about running that bilge pump and draining my battery just yet. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of pans on this island and just kinda gradually wake up. I've got all day before I have to get home and it's just a short drive, so plenty of time for some test pans, lying out in the sun, eating my sourdoughs, and it's gonna make for a good day. See how this is doing here. A little bit more here. One more minute. Okay. Got the little bubbles throughout almost all the pancake. Let's see if this works. Oh, look at that beauty. Okay. It's a cast iron pan, so it's got a lot of heat in it. Turned off the stove, so it'll start to calm down a little bit. Wait about a minute, I'll pour some maple syrup on there. Next thing you know, I'll be 
carton blueberries out here. Absolutely heaven. Crispy, sourdough, maple syrup, Got fire going, sun's out, life is good. Hmm. If you've never done sourdoughs, I'm not sure where you would actually get the starter to begin with, but uh, once somebody you know has the starter, you basically just add flour and water, and whenever you want to make a batch, you basically pour about half of your starter into the new batch, and mix it with flour and water, and then add some of that flour and water back to the starter itself, and, and you keep the starter you can store in the fridge, and one you can take out, and bring camping. So I'm running the outboard because I guess if I run that bilge pump too long in this small and uh, old battery, it sort of almost didn't start, so I'm just letting her charge back up. That bilge pump is uh, it's going to take hours, so I'm busting out the old gold mining pump. Quick work of it. Boat started uh, floating away. It was so light. <laughs> Hopefully, there's enough juice in that battery. It uh, starts again. Maybe I'll turn the bilge pump off while I'm doing the rest of my packing. I'm not actually planning on mining with any of this stuff today. I'm just uh, sort of seeing how it will all fit in the boat. Basically. I'm just here to pan today and if I find something good I can sort of mark down where it is and come back to it but I just wanted to stretch the boat's legs a little bit see how it handles all the mining gear and my brain works better because I want to do some modifications to the boat in the next couple weeks here so my brain just works better seeing it all seeing how I move around the boat it was a good test for that this gravel bar here is absolutely massive. So I've gone all the way in there to beyond where I would even have hose and all the way downstream in areas where I don't even expect to find gold. I'm still just giving them a little test pan here and there because a lot of the times I surprise myself. I think we have come to the conclusion of this weekend, which is that I've done many pans found some spots but you know like 30 colors nothing too exciting on the gold front I had a great time camping and eating sourdoughs for breakfast um, the boat I've learned a little bit more about it I was able to take all my gear and sort of see where it would fit in the boat and everything how the weight distribution is so stay tuned if you are interested in sort of the modifications I'm gonna do to this boat it's not gonna be super extensive but um, if you've got a John Boat idea of your own and you want to sort of see how I get this thing dialed in, then hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel and I'd appreciate it. Um, other than that, hopefully next time I get out, I will be heading to a river that's open for actual mining and get the sluice box out. So until then, as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day, everyone.